outside the FDA, we remain the only group to bring patients together as equal partners to advance this field. Um, I wanted to share some of the outcomes of the 2015 summit. Um, we really wanted to focus our efforts at that point in time as rebranding celiac disease as a serious genetic autoimmune disease to focus more attention on the extra intestinal manifestations of the disease and to co-create our Go Beyond Celiac Registry. As a result, we've seen the celiac patient community come to a greater understanding that treatments beyond the gluten-free diet are really necessary. And we surveyed the community and data has shown this shift. In 2019, we convened a similar group. This time, we in included the FDA in our meeting and we focused our meeting on clinical trial acceleration. Today's meeting is built upon the learnings from these prior meetings. So now let's put this all into perspective. In 2016, two major pharmaceutical companies were working on therapies for celiac disease. Today, we have 13, and I'll say 13 major pharmaceutical companies working in this space with eight in clinical trial development. This is a big deal. Although much has been accomplished, we have, we have more potential and we have more potential treatments in the development pipeline than ever before. We still do not, we do not have treatments beyond the gluten-free diet. And this disease is wo woefully underfunded and it's not, still not seen as a serious disease, but we're gonna change all that. As a patient advocacy organization, we have prioritized and made it our mission to make sure that topics that are important to patients through our surveys, through Go Beyond Celiac, are receiving the funding and attention. Today, you'll hear from some of our grantees. We're proud of all of these efforts and like to focus, like our focus on neurocognitive issues in celiac disease. Led by Dr. Salvo Alessi, we're implementing a comprehensive scientific strategy with a focus on strategic partnerships to accelerate treatments and a cure for celiac disease. We look forward to this continued partnership among the field of celiac disease. We're gonna move it forward and elevate the voices of all patients so that we can eat without fear and live life to the fullest. Now I'd like to introduce our Chief Scientist and Strategy Officer, Dr. Salvo Alessi. Salvo? Thanks, Alice, for the introduction, and uh, good morning and welcome uh, to all of you again. Thanks for being here today. Uh, one of the greatest barriers, really, to advancing meaningful treatment for celiac disease beyond uh, the gluten-free diet has been uh, limited funding, lack of funding for research. Um, beyond Celiac recognized that need earlier on and made funding of the most cutting edge research, no matter where the research is in the US and Europe a priority. And I should recognize actually the leadership of the scientific advisory board under the leadership of uh, Bob Bell and my predecessor to really champion these efforts all the way to the board. Today you will hear and for a change in person rather than virtually on a, on a Zoom camera directly uh, from the researchers that we founded about their work. And their work is some of the most innovative uh, in the field. Our commitment to research as an organization continue, continues, in fact, it has been further strengthened now under the leadership of Steve Miller with the Scientific Advisory Board. We are going to uh, focus primarily on supporting translational research consistently with the scientific plan. Why translational research? Because we are positioning ourselves as a cure accelerator. We want to fund research that can go from the bench to the bedside in a short period of time. We also want to focus on attracting and supporting young investigators, including attracting young investigators from other fields, which is why at the end of last year, we established an Early Career Investigator Award in collaboration with the SSTD. This is not a one-time gig, it's an yearly commitment, and uh, we are going to announce the awardee, the first awardee at the end of this month. 
Uh, we have also um, happy to see uh, the NIH stepping up with a notice of uh, a special interest about supporting, adding funding uh, for, uh, for uh, research in celiac disease and also broadening up. But let's face it, not a single organization, not the NIH, not the pharmaceutical industry, definitely not us, can truly make the type of change that we really want to see in this disease. It needs, as Alice was pointed out, some coordinated effort and partnership, which is why we put partnership at the center of our scientific plan as a key enabler. I briefly mentioned the partnership with FSCD uh, for the Early Investigator Award. There are a few others that I want to highlight, uh, such as the partnership with Janssen, to try to really come up with early detection of celiac disease before even the disease manifests and early interception, as well as the partnership with the National Minority Quality Forum, uh, the leading advocacy organization in DC uh, trying to address health disparity. In collaboration with the NMQF, as part of a broader strategy for us to make sure every patient, no matter where she is, what the color is, what the socioeconomic status is, we have been trying to map celiac disease across the United States with the goal to identify health inequities, disparities, and, and address them. Um, and again, this just illustrates some e example of uh, how uh, partnership is, is important for us. But our efforts are going even further. In addition to be focusing on funding research beyond celiac has been a great convener of multiple stakeholders working in the area. This is not the first research summit we are having. Alice mentioned some of the previous efforts. Um, and uh, these efforts have been, dis you know, extremely helpful to identify the area of research where we should work on. But it's absolutely necessary if we really want to accelerate treatment that these efforts go beyond meeting us here, having a summit, having some discussion and some research as well. And I'm proud today to inform this group that Beyond Celiac has uh, established the first of its kind multi-stakeholder coalition, bringing together uh, stakeholders from the pharmaceutical industry, the diagnostic industry, academic centers, universities, as well as medical hospitals, all together with a focus on how we can address barriers to participation, engagement in clinical trials. Clinical trials are necessary to bring drugs to patients and many barriers remain in place. Um, the goal of this coalition is to leverage expertise, uh, funding, uh, other resources by, by the members and come up with the projects that are really focused with the some clear short and long-term deliverables and impact that can address these barriers. And I can tell you we had already quite a few meetings and the discussion had been quite concrete with priorities being identified, clear objective, and uh, you will hear more about this in the, in the next coming days. So I'd like to conclude, uh, again, talking about partnership at the risk of sounding like a broken bell. Partnership work. We heard yesterday from Stacy and Steve about the amazing work that, uh, that the FNIH has done, you know, as a, up till recently with, with COVID. And they can be transformative. And I'm truly convinced uh, that through the coalition and some of the other partnership that we have in place and more to come, we will be able to move the needle in the celiac disease space and truly accelerate development and treatment of a cure for this disease. So I look forward to strengthen our partnership with each, each of you and, uh, and your organization. And uh, I look forward to a very uh, productive uh, day and please feel free to engage in the discussion as much as you feel, uh, feel comfortable doing. Thank you again. And